welcome back to the channel how is everybody doing today man oh it's a fairly beautiful day outside guys it's got to be 65 degrees right now in the atlanta area uh, well you know everything that's going on the crisis we in now so it's kind of a damper spirit but uh, some still have to go to work and I am one of them now guys y'all recognize this center console This is a Dodge you can tell it's a Dodge But it is a Dodge journey and what's going on guys is uh, I'm just getting back off a of test drive y'all know I like to drive my cars duplicate the concern verify the complaint and I highly suggest You guys do the same thing now. I am back. I'm gonna head it back into the shop Problem is, uh, I might not even, uh, I didn't really have to drive this car. I just wanted to drive it anyway to get a feel for what's going on. Uh, they complain about uh, battery issues, uh, spikes in the cluster, uh, battery up and down. One day they had to boost it. In fact, when I got in it, it wasn't dead. I didn't have to jump start it. I just uh, jump started and uh, took off on a test drive. Okay, like I said, I have to. Uh, it gives me a peace of mind when I do that. All right, so I'm back at the dealership uh, Now they did scan the car uh, The service advisor have to scan the car before the techs even get it one of the codes that I see on the ticket was uh, related to the IBS You know they stand for intelligent battery sensor Maybe uh, now that thing acts as a uh, it plays two roles guys. It's the negative battery post and uh that battery sensor that tells uh pretty much all the modules uh what the battery is doing the condition of the battery how much volts flowing through it the temperature of the battery anybody that need to know that information will receive it from this module because it's on the network bus all right which also means is it likely you should be able to pick it up on your scan too okay so because i'm back now at the shop i am gonna actually pull up my scan too i'm going to scan this thing and see for myself the fault codes and what's going on we're going to proceed with diagnosis all right that's why i always start with uh now i didn't give off uh y'all see here i don't give off really anything like a check engine light uh just uh nagging battery uh electrical complaints okay like i say that sensor acts as the negative battery post so if it's loose or anything going on with it it could affect any and all electrical uh, items and uh, electrical potential electrical failures. All right, so that needs to be checked. All right, guys, I'm back in the shop. I'm gonna go to my laptop top uh, and my scan tool. First, I'm gonna go to a quick ad break. Y'all, please be patient with the ad breaks and uh, I can't say let them play, but uh, y'all know the drill, man. Welcome to YouTube. That's what YouTube is all about, guys. Okay, uh, now don't go anywhere, guys. I will be right back. Alright, I'm at my computer right now, so as you can see, yellow in any particular module usually represent a fault code. Alright, that lightning bolt right there represents a flash update to this module, which happens to be the BCM. Alright, let's go inside the BCM. And let's go uh, see what DTC it set, and as you can see, it did set U113E. That stands for... The body controller uh, essentially lost communication with the intelligent battery sensor, the IBS. All right, and this is active, so I have the key on right now. So if it's active, that means it's not getting that signal at all. And like I told you, the information that that IBS put out, very, very, very important uh, for a number of reasons. Okay, so let's go, let's take a look at the diagnosis uh, and see what really, what all do they want you to do. As far as diagnostic go, this is a 2.4 liter journey, 2017 model. Okay, looking at this circuit, it's fairly simple, guys. Um, you got the IBS right here. Obviously, only two wires going to it. One wire, which looks like a red rock wire, should be a power supply from a fuse, a 20 or 25 amp fuse. Okay, so. I guess first thing you should check when dealing with this fault code is make sure this particular fuse is not open. All right. Now the other wire at this IBS merely goes straight hardwired to the BCM. 
Alright, let's stroll down and see. Uh, that's a photo of the connectors. Alright, I know this is the place everybody likes to go to first. Possible cause. Okay, one of the possible causes, of course, I just mentioned the fuse being open. Uh, ground circuit open. Uh, Lynn bus circuit open. Remember, this is uh, this IBS is on the bus network. That is why you are able to read it on a scan tool. Uh, the IBS sensor itself could be at fault. And last but not least, uh, the BCM could be at fault okay so if you have this fault call I highly recommend you go through all these steps before just simply replacing the IBS even though the circuit looks simple it could get a little complex okay uh, I've seen many times a technician just merely put the sensor on and it the light still on or the checking the light come on or for whatever reason that don't do not fix the problem because that wasn't the problem all right so guys uh i highly recommend you following the test procedure first before just replacing a part all right so what i'm gonna do uh this is my problem so what i'm gonna do is go to the car and now we're gonna uh, proceed with installing this ibs sensor all right it's fairly easy and uh there's no sense in relating this part to the car because this sensor is used on several different makes and model of cars all right so don't go anywhere guys i'm gonna go to a quick ad break when i get back we're gonna install this intelligent battery sensor all right we'll get to it when i get back stay tuned don't go anywhere i will be right back all right guys welcome back here is my part this is my ibs intelligent battery sensor okay we're getting ready to replace this now keep in mind guys this play double duty all right this is also the negative battery post all right so depending on the car you're working on uh will dictate its location this is a dodge journey you can gain access to the battery uh after you remove the air cleaner housing of course there here's the battery and here is my negative post and here is my ibs sensor okay of course, there's an electrical connector both to it. Let's, so let's get that unplugged. Alright, first we might want to remove the, uh, the battery cable first. Alright, so because uh, if we loosen this first, then we'll be moving the IBS. So let's get the battery cable off first. You may get some spark because it is partially making contact, but we got to get this bolt off of here. And keep in mind, this is the negative battery post. All right, here's the nut, it's 13 millimeter. So let's get the cable off of the IBS sensor, like such. All right, now we need a 10 millimeter to remove this terminal nut. All right, we got that loose. So now let's uh, merely pick up on the sensor. Like I said, it's fairly easy because it acts as a negative battery post also. And here it is. All right, so uh, not much to replacing it, really not much to diagnosing it. All right, it's two-wire setup. Here's my new one. I'm going to get it installed, put on. Then we're going to erase the fault code. And simply go and test drive the car like I say guys this can affect charging uh, a lot of computer a lot of modules need information from this sensor okay it can give off the temperature of the battery also as far as um, um, amperage and load is going through it all right so let's get this installed uh, to install it just merely reverse the removal process try to put it back in the right spot right in the correct position that you removed it from tighten everything down all right so i'm gonna do that off camera and like i say then i'm gonna go test drive the car uh recheck it for fault codes and make sure everything is all right uh the way it's designed okay guys that's all i have man thanks for watching comment and subscribe and i'll see y'all on the next video